When you think about South Africa, you probably don't think of anything positive, and that's pretty fair. But there's more to this country than meets the eye, and if you're up to the challenge, you can actually have a really fun campaign as South Africa. Today, my goal is to decolonize Africa as them, and you will see me turn this state held together by minerals and racism, turn into one of the great powers of the world. So starting off, South Africa, not quite the CEO of racism, that goes to middle Africa, but we're definitely somewhere in the middle management of racism incorporated. Now, this is my second attempt at recording this run because the first one went completely off the rails with Germany declaring on the Entente in 1938, basically ruining any challenge for my campaign. So starting off, focus tree is pretty straightforward, but some parts of this will change. And of course, like most Kaiserreich nations, we gotta deal with Black Monday first. The industrial lobby told me if I was serious about economic recovery, I should repeal this labor law that allows them to fire expensive white workers and hire cheap black ones. Sounds good. Does it work? When the repeal started to go through, a lot of white workers acted exactly as you'd expect. But you can't do this to me. Violence and rioting became widespread, and while the military wanted to go in and immediately stop it all, the government just told them to isolate protester groups and it went about as well as you'd expect. Black farmers joined with the white workers in the uprising, forming socialist militias that would take over the country. So, the South African people were happy. They won against the greedy capitalists, but now there are consequences. Somebody was not happy with me turning to socialism and declared war. Now I had to defend this new government from my vengeful exes if I wanted to have a future. While this war went on, I started the Johannesburg Convention to talk about what this future would even look like. We were gonna be socialist, and we were gonna abolish racism, so certain people are not gonna be okay with that. Oh no, no. This, this, this can't be. The effect of that was kind of a bummer though, but once the Constitutional Convention finishes, we establish the proudly syndicalist government. None of the Entente nations ever tried to invade me during the war. They just missed their ride over to South Africa, I guess. At least I'm now safely in the Third International, and while my country was building itself up, I might as well have some fun in Spain. I had that same issue with not getting reinforcements for my division, but I find out that getting military access from the country for some reason fixes that. I got two divisions there, and we were doing great work pushing to Sevilla, and I'm thinking the Kingdom of Spain is gonna be an easy cleanup, only for the syndicalists to just completely forget about them when we were about to win. So I have to run away and give up all the gains, but can't be too upset because the AI did deliver a death blow to the Carlos. So I went to help the AI finish destroying Carlos Spain before finally getting back to ending the Kingdom of Spain. They really didn't have that much fight left in them, so the Spanish Civil War was soon won. Now, after hard carrying that civil war, the next place that required my help was America. My volunteers arrive in Chicago, and I would send them to the East Coast. But I can't help but wonder how my guys even got here. Like, the CSA is surrounded by enemy factions, and I doubt Canada wants us here, so I guess we just mind trick some border guards to let us through? New York City was not gonna fall easily, unfortunately. A lot of units entrenched a big city, and I tried everything. I tried attacking them, assaulting them, and launched an offensive, but nothing seemed to work, so I decided to look elsewhere to see where my talents could better be used. At least in the south I was able to do stuff, and it was going great. I helped the CSA secure a lot more territory, and Canada just didn't seem to care what was happening. Good things were happening in Europe, with the Austrian Empire collapsing to revolts, becoming a failed state, and getting annexed by Germany. And with the Pacific States of America gone, all that was left was the holdouts in New England and New York City. And sadly, the militia remaining here just couldn't take all the new pressure being put on it, and that city was soon ours. The USA tapped out pretty quickly afterwards, and America was now communist. The Second Weltkrieg started three months later, with the Internationale wanting me in, but I just wasn't ready at the time. But I could only take other people having fun without me for so long until I caved in and joined. 
From day one, we were already styling on the colonial militias Middle Africa put up against me. The first goal, though, was to secure Namibia, and while we slowly trekked towards the main ports, America was uncharacteristically eager to join this foreign war. I mean, I appreciate the enthusiasm of America, but I feel like I've got some problems to work on. After four months of slogging through deserts and mountains, we finally liberated the very valuable land of Namibia from the imperialist forces. And after such a decisive victory, we're clearly showing how valuable we are as a member of the team. By September 1940, I was surprised the Entente hadn't joined the war yet against us, so I wasn't going to let them wait much longer, because the Portuguese needed to get out of Africa. While that justification went on, the Marines continued to dunk on the colonial militia. Marines weren't the ideal choice for this because Africa is mainly forests and mountains here, but I can at least upgrade Marines with naval XP. Just want to point out it's been nearly a year since the Civil War ended and America hasn't even started reconstruction yet. Now, you may be thinking the AI is just being stupid, and while you're right, it is actually pretty lore accurate for America to get involved in an overseas conflict at the expense of its own people. Once the justification finished and I declared on Portugal, the Portuguese tried to defend their colonies, and that's the most credit I can really give them. Because I'm so cool and awesome and everybody loves me, I'm getting a lot of material support internationally without even asking for it, and I'm really proud of the collection I've made in my army now. To be fair, look at where I'm fighting. I'm gonna go through guns as fast as a college student goes through Adderall. I need all the support I can get. As I made my way through Middle Africa and approached their capital, some rebels in Kenya rise up to throw out their German oppressors, and I was so happy for them until I saw what they stood for. Once I took the Middle African capital, the whole country capitulated, putting all those imperialist forces in a very awkward position. It's funny how Kaiserreich set it up so taking this one city caps the whole country. The Germans hear news of Dar es Salaam falling and it's like... Oh, so I'm just going around trying to destroy the cutoff pockets of Portuguese and Germans. Then I decide to check in on how the fighting's going in Europe. And it looks like the Reichspact is falling, but then I notice the Pope. Dude's fighting solo against the rest of the Reichspact and has somehow even taken land from the Italian Republic. Things are just going in our favor. I've almost crossed through all of Congo, Canada has been pushed into a small area, and Germany was rapidly collapsing. They're basically a washed up superpower at this point, dying pretty similarly to how they died in our timeline. When the Reichspact collapsed, I was able to annex all the German colonial states in Africa in the first peace deal, and in the second peace deal with Germany itself, I didn't have much war score, but I did get the remaining African colonies and acquire some nice ships. The next move was getting rid of reactionary France, and unfortunately, I couldn't allow a fascist state to exist in Kenya, so they had to go too. Despite me being syndicalist, I was rooting for the Pope, but the Libs got to him before France arrived. After the fall of the Rights Pact, Europe got divided in a peace deal that looked very familiar, and I would be fine with this until I saw Russia was attacking the Ottoman Empire, which wouldn't be good for me because if the Ottomans fell to Russia, the Russians would be able to take Egypt, and that would be imperialism I couldn't stand. I tried to justify on Egypt as fast as possible, but in the meantime, in April of 1942, the time was up for Kiki Uland. Why did you make me do this? Soon, my justification for Egypt finishes, but before I'm able to do anything with it, the Ottoman Empire is completely gone. So the Russians now completely controlled the Middle East, whatever, that's not important. The real problem though is they took Egypt and Sudan, setting up their fascist puppet states in those areas and I'm not gonna let that stand. But I figure I should focus on the Entente since finding them and Russia is gonna be kinda tough. I kinda feel bad for my marines at this point, trained to do naval operations, forced to trudge through the sands of the Sahara. But even though this isn't what they signed up for, they're still pretty good at their job. National France, separate pieces, but sadly, I don't have the war score to get all my rightful African land. France ends up with Tunisia and Algeria and sets up the puppet states. 
and at this point, I just accept there's nothing we can do, and give up all that land to them for the sake of nice borders. Imagine being Liberia, seeing South Africa dominate most of Africa, and still have the audacity to demand land from them. Now, I gotta admire the boldness, but they had to die. With National France gone, I also felt safe enough now to start the justification on Egypt. And while that justification went on, I would use the Marines for their intended purpose for once and prepare a giant naval invasion of India that would quickly sweep the country. But Britain was nice enough to do that first part for us, so the Marines were once again robbed of their purpose. Once I formed a beachhead at the southern tip of India, I made a troubling realization that India has a lot of people. So I'd have to grind through a lot of divisions here to kill this country. Liberia, surprisingly, had some hands too. This was supposed to be a quick sweep and they're messing me up. I was taking a lot of heat at India and was on the verge of pulling out, but fortunately my good allies decided to take some pressure off of me with some naval invasions. I knew it was a matter of time before the AI fumbled this easy W, so I needed my marines to lock in for a big push. And lock in they did. They made a big hole in the front line, pushed to the other coast, surrounding an entire Indian army. The casualties after that were pretty nasty for the Indians. After this victory, I figured this was the turning point and India couldn't last much longer, so might as well just start World War III. I mean, planning bonus plus allied air support equals India having a bad time. After sending some extra troops to West Africa, Liberia was finally put in its place. Progress is speeding up in India, but I can't help but notice that America is just fumbling in Canada, so I'm just gonna send some marines to finish the Canadians off. But threatened with us embarrassing them, this inspired the Americans to get their act together because before the marines were halfway across the Atlantic, Canada was finally gone. Now, I could officially liberate Portugal's colonies in Africa, and even got Morocco too. India was now the last Entente member standing, and they were rapidly collapsing. In Africa, my troops in Sudan had finally pushed to a point where they could get supplies. Also, I was going to make moves in Yemen to open up the Red Sea to our faction ships. And Germany looked fine ish. I mean, it wasn't my problem anyways. My problem was making the India problem go away, and by May 1944, I was so close. The British royal family seeing this situation trying to make another escape from us, but they weren't going anywhere. India surrendered soon, and I thought, you know what? I fought for India. I deserve it more than any of these other free riders. This is not imperialism, by the way. Don't call it that. It was finally time for me to make my arrival in Europe. I needed to make a big entrance, and I thought dumping 39 marines in Greece would be a great way to do that. When the invasion started, it was just not a good time to be in Greece. They got overrun very fast, and the British were kind enough to take Albania on their own, but all these mountains here were really putting a damper on my offensive dreams. I mean, I tried to brute force through them, but it wasn't getting me anywhere. It took me too long to realize this, but I eventually figured out I could just go around the mountains. Over here, it was a lot easier. I could just right-click a province, and the marines were so cracked they would kill the Russian divisions before they could reinforce battles. I just repeated this until the Bosphorus was taken, but I figured I shouldn't be moving my marines away from where most of the enemy is and focus on Romania. These marines are practically bullying the AI whenever they fight. They hit like tank divisions, and at this point I'd say they're better than tanks since they can easily take out entrenched infantry in a city. The troops of the Moscow Accord were not having a good time at this point. With Romania gone, Yugoslavia didn't have much going for it. They were cooked, and Hungary was just left standing there like a deer in headlights. With all the Balkans cleared out, Russia had taken quite the beating. They couldn't even hold the entire front line in Germany, so our comrades were spreading out in the north. I was a bit surprised at who caused the most casualties to Russia at this point. Just proves that the AI's been kill-stealing from me this entire war. It's kinda sad that the Russian AI just kinda gave up on trying. Like, we're forming a pocket in Germany, and the Russian AI just does nothing and accepts that it's over at this point. 
It says that they have divisions, but I'm pretty sure most of those are trapped in Germany since they have nothing defending their homeland. Once those divisions are gone, I take a look at the division count of Russian again, and yep, they barely have anything left. Which is confusing because they have a ton of equipment sitting in warehouses that I guess they just don't want to use? Well, it just makes it a peaceful drive through Russia to all the major cities. Any Russian who'd try to stop us at this point wouldn't have a good time. With the fall of Moscow, it was finally time to claim victory and free Africa for good. I grabbed the Middle East too, but come on, I deserved it for my effort. But don't worry, this isn't imperialism. Technically, we're still at war with Japan, but honestly, just don't care. Africa is free, and that's what matters, so I hope you guys enjoyed this South Africa playthrough. I was actually surprised with how much fun you can have as South Africa, because honestly, the focus tree is pretty straightforward, but it does make you very strong, and as you can see, when you max out two of the Special Forces doctrines, you can just stomp everyone. Anyways, thanks to my alumni helping fund my anti-colonial ambitions on Patreon. Any support there helps me to prioritize making quality videos for you guys. If you can't, that's okay. Just leave a like on this video if you enjoyed, subscribe for more quality in your feed, and enjoy the rest of your day.